whether you were born into it or not, the 80s were our iconic decade, giving birth to big hair, big music, and even bigger movies. And even over 40 years later, unless you've been living under a rock, I bet there isn't a single one of you who hasn't looked at Necron Warrior and compared it to that juggernaut killing machine from the future. I know I sure have. So why don't we tie those two comparisons together? Let's paint a warrior straight out of James Cameron's vision of 2029. Now it is important on this look that we base cut our mini in a black primer. If you've got a gloss black primer, even better. But I'm just going to base mine in chaos black and then if you need to, gloss varnish over everything. Whatever brand you have is totally fine, we just need to make sure we have the shiniest black possible for this effect to work. And that's because we're going to be giving our metals a chrome plated look. Now this here is Alclad chrome paint. They do various metals like aluminium and copper, but you want to use the chrome for this. Now you don't want to reduce it at all. It needs to be used straight out of the bottle and applied in the thinnest coats possible. Now we're not aiming to make this silver either. Because of the dark setting we're going for, you just want to apply this in the thinnest of layers, just to almost give you a chrome black rather than a brightly polished silver. And when that's applied, you could just leave it there for the metals. But personally, I want to break up the mini from being a solid layer of silver on every part. So to keep with that morbid tone, I'm going to pick off various joints and pistons with warp lock bronze. Just for a bit of variation really, just to look like bronze bushes or bearings, but to also keep everything dark. But personally, I wouldn't go too much further on that. You don't need to highlight or shadow this effect because the layer of chrome is going to naturally highlight the edges catching the light and it will leave that black undercoat in all the recesses. Whatever you do, you have to leave this gloss. If you spray a matte varnish over it, you're going to end up with the dullest grey and it will just ruin everything. Shall we move on to the gun now? The one thing I see when people do schemes themed to this setting is that every light source is painted a bright red. But I feel that's just too warm for that cold heartless setting. I know their eyes are red, but everything else would suit a cold colour drain with shades of blue and purple, just to give that hopeless depression feel. So to contrast that chrome, we're going to be base coating the gun with any old black you have. Myself, I'm using a bad and black. And again, to add some variation, just pick off various things like the coils and the gun barrel with warp block bronze. And now let's work on those orbs. First of all, as you've seen with most of my glows, the first step is always just to map out the areas with a soft, subtle coat of white. Paint the light sources themselves with a bright coat, and then the surrounded areas, they just want a real soft coating just to pick off those edges. If you plan on doing this method with a brush, you can follow all the steps in my airbrush free red glow video I did, and just change the colours up from red to blue. But you've probably got an airbrush already if you've painted the chrome step, as that step has to be done with an airbrush. So the first layer of tint in these glows is with Vallejo Gamic Blue. Now you want a nice wide soft coating of this layer and just tint all of that white spread you've just laid down. Don't worry if you get little bits on surrounding areas as you actually kind of want a subtle layer on those areas anyway. Places like the leg facing the gun and those knuckles. And then when you're happy with that blue coat we go over the orbs again with the white but this time you want to be spraying a lot finer and aiming closer to the core just to simulate the light being stronger there. And then as before, tint it once again with the blue ink, but this time it wants to be a much softer coat. The blue wants to be a lot brighter at the core, so only a thin pass of ink is needed. As a final layer we do on all of our light sources, at the very very core of each orb, you just want to paint a white dot on each one just to really brighten them up and simulate the core glowing white hot. Where would he be without those smouldering red eyes scanning the area around him? Now the eyes. The eyes are only small. They don't want to be pumping out a ton of glow. Just a small amount would be plenty for this. So we're not going to use the airbrush here. All we're going to do is dot the centre of the eyes with white, brush a tiny bit of red ink around them just to simulate a small glow, and then all we're going to do is re-brighten those cores again. And that's it. So now you're ready. Eight years time when the internet comes to take over us all and we spend the rest of our lives hiding indoors away from the... I said eight years. Not now. And there you have it. How I painted a Necron Warrior 
in the style of that colossal killing machine. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video, and whilst I go practice reloading my shotguns, in the coolest way possible, why not give us a little message on Reddit or Discord? The feedback on this channel has been amazing so far, and I'd love to see it work its way up to a thousand subscribers, so if you could help out there, it'd be hugely appreciated. As always, my name's been Paul, hopefully you've learned something here today, fingers crossed, you'll be